Oral medications are the most common type of medication you will administer. When administering an oral medication, do the following. Check the expiration date on the container. Do not touch the medication itself. Also, do not allow the open side of the cap to touch any surface. If you need to set a cap down, place it on its top. Pour the medication into a medication cup or into the child's clean hand. Have the child take the pill with water. If a child has difficulty swallowing a pill, ask the parent or guardian to check with their pharmacist to see if this medication is available in a liquid or chewable tablet form. Watch to see that the child has swallowed the medication. You are responsible to see that he or she swallows the medication. You may need to ask the child to open his or her mouth to verify the pill has been swallowed. Now let's discuss oral liquids. Read the instructions to see if the liquid needs to be shaken. If so, make sure the top is on securely and use a rotating wrist movement to thoroughly mix the liquid. When opening the bottle, place the cap open side up. Pour the liquid into the medication cup at eye level, filling it to the prescribed dosage level. Make sure you know the difference between a teaspoon and a tablespoon, since a tablespoon would give three times the dose of a teaspoon. If the dosage is confusing, such as calculating milligrams, mg, or milliliters, ml, be sure to contact your medical supervisor. Give the medication cup to the student and make sure he or she swallows the entire contents of the cup. Oral medications should usually be followed by a glass of water, except for medications such as cough syrup. Receiving eye drops or an eye ointment can be an uncomfortable experience for students, especially young children. So explain to the student what you were about to do. Make sure to wash your hands. Give the student a tissue to hold, instructing him or her not to touch the eye with fingers. Ask the student to lie down with his or her head tilted back. Ask the student to look up toward the top of his or her head. Make a pocket by retracting the lower lid. You may need to separate the child's eyelids. Bring the bottle or tube to the child's eye from the side. Do not approach the eye directly from the front. Do not allow the bottle or tube to touch the eye. Doing so could damage the eye or contaminate the tip of the bottle or tube. Hold the bottle or tube with your thumb and forefinger while bracing the rest of your hand against the child's cheek. For eye drops, keep the bottle close to the eye, so that the drops do not fall more than one inch, but be careful not to contact the eye. Some eye medications require you to put pressure on the tear duct below the inner corner of the eye. Check with your medical supervisor. For eye ointments, apply a thin ribbon inside the lower lid pocket. Be sure to avoid contact with the eye. For both drops and ointments, instruct the student not to squeeze eyes or shut tightly, as this may push some of the medication out of the eyes. Ask the student to look down towards his or her feet and close the eye gently for two to three minutes. Clean skin of any excess medication by wiping with a clean tissue. When giving eye drops, it's important to keep in mind that the pocket formed by retracting the lower lid can generally hold only one drop. If a child's dose requires more than one drop, it is optimal to administer one drop at a time. If possible, wait five to 10 minutes between each drop's application. Take the following steps when administering nose drops or nasal sprays. Have the child blow his or her nose gently. Check the bottle to see if the child should be sitting, standing, or lying down. For nose drops, put the dropper at the entrance of the child's nostril. Give the correct amount of drops. Tell the child to stay still with his or her head tilted back for several seconds. For nasal sprays, tell the student to sniff in on the count of three as you squeeze the bottle. You can have the student close one nostril while the spray is administered to the other nostril.